This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, your solution when you need a virtual server in the cloud. Use the code MACVOICES2019 to take $20 off your first purchase at linode.com slash macvoices. Welcome back to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. Folks, this time we're going to cover a topic that I've wanted to cover for a while, but hadn't been able to find anybody that actually been doing it or had made the transition. And that's using an eSIM uh, as, a, as a second SIM in an iPhone. And I finally found that David Ginsburg has actually accomplished this feat. And I have a lot of questions. I think you probably do too. So we're going we're gonna to quiz David a little bit on how it works. David, it's good to see you. Great to see you too, Chuck. Glad to be back. This yeah. is going to be a fun topic. Absolutely, absolutely. And you're be quickly becoming the, the iPhone iOS go-to guy. Um, oh, I guess, I'm, I'm proud of that, actually. <laughs> yeah, well, it's, you know, it's, uh, I would kind of expect that with somebody that does a podcast called In Touch with iOS. So This is true. This you know, is true. You, you, I hope you're staying up late studying. I am. I got a lot of, a lot of studying to do for iOS 13 still. There's just, still isn't enough to, to learn yet. There's just so much. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But this time, we're going to talk about a feature that is not exactly new to the iPhone 11s, um, right. or iPhones 11, I guess. Um, it's been around for a little while, and it's it's been used by some people. But for some reason, it, it was one of those features that everybody screams about, we need it, we want it, we, we got to have it or else, and then sort of falls off the map. And it's one that I'd like to learn a little bit more about, and that is the eSIM capability and the dual SIM capability of the Mm -hmm. iPhone, the iPhone. So let's start off because you looked it up for me. Which iPhones are we talking about here that have these, this capability? So it starts with the, uh, the iPhone uh, 10 R and then, then then the 10 S then the 10 S max. And of course all the 11s are are compatible as well. So this actually started with the 10, the the 10 R and 10 S series um, because they did not have it in the 10. Um, So, that's where you'll start with the eSIM. Let, let, let's kind of start. What what is eSIM? We're gonna really kind of. I mean, if, you, if that's okay, we can kind of tell everybody what eSIM really is. And really, what eSIM is is this. This is the complete elimination of uh, of a physical SIM. We're so used to those little nano SIMs that we take in and out all the time. And a lot of us us uh, techie people like to take their SIMs and put them in different phones and all that stuff. And uh, the nice thing about it is it's an electronic built-in SIM. So any phone, that, any iPhone that you have that uh, in, in those model series, you can take that with you and go to any carrier, assuming that they all support it. All the big four support it now. So it's really awesome. But that's what really, in essence, it is. Kind of a, a little bit of a history. I kind of discovered it with when having a Pixel 2, Pixel 2 XL. Uh, and that phone had eSIM built into it, but it was using Android, of course, but it was the Google Fi service that was the, the compatibility of eSIM. So they kind of started it. Uh, with that service, but now now AT and T, T Mobile, uh, Verizon, Sprint, they're all they're all um, they're all using this uh, 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 this eSIM service now. But the the biggest key of it all is the fact that now that frees up the SIM slot that's in your phone, and now you're going to be able to use it for for two lines, which we'll get into in a minute. Which is the big, I think, the big attraction here. Not just the fact that you can, you know, go to any carrier, but the idea that you can have two lines on one phone as opposed to having to carry around two phones. Right. Okay. So, when it's, what do we have to do? What kind of iPhone do we have to buy? Not the model, but as far as being tied to one one carrier when i when i purchased my iphone 11 i told it you know yes i use at&t and because that's one of the questions they ask you is which carrier do you use so am i locked in any way to at&t at this point or can i jump around and this this, this by the way folks just leaves all the contract questions completely <laughs> off the table that's something you've got to figure out i'm just right, talking right. the technical part now with with me, the way I purchase an iPhone, I always go with the iPhone upgrade program each year. So um, I'm able to uh, decide whether or not, okay, do I want to keep my phone for another year and, or and for two full years I pay it off or do I trade it in? So that in essence gives me the opportunity, regardless if it's upgrade or if you, if you, um, the, the upgrade, the upgrade upgrade program, program each year or if you start one off where you trade in a phone and, and purchase it through apple 
my my recommendation is always to go through Apple with this because uh, this this will work perfectly because you're not going to be locked to any carrier. Yes, you do declare what carrier you have. In my case, it was T-Mobile, um, but the phone is not locked. So it, I can take another SIM from another service. Um, and, and a good example of what I'm doing is I have a I, I wanted to have a second SIM through Mint. Mint Mobile, of course, is one of, one of your one of your sponsors, um, and uh, th- it worked perfectly. You put the SIM in there, and uh, you have that option as well. So any really any carrier, but of course the other option, of course, would be the fact that you want to uh, be able to travel overseas, and maybe you want to get uh, you want to get a SIM local SIM and have, have local capabilities as well as uh, uh, your your carrier. So that really how it how it really sums up how uh, how that works as far as how you get it. And if you if you lock with a contract, I can't I can't guarantee you that you're going to be able to get um, access with that second sim. You may, uh, but I can't I can't tell you 100 uh, percent because I have not experienced that. I've only experienced uh, what I just explained. Okay, a quick note. David mentioned that Mint. Uh, he's using Mint, and Mint is a sponsor of Mac Voices. And I've been super, super happy with Mint, and that's one of the things that I will be looking at is putting my Mint my Mint SIM into my main iPhone because I've been using it with a sep- separate second iPhone. Um, but yeah, I want to make sure there's full disclosure on that. that yeah. This is not a discussion necessarily of Mint, although Mint is one of the carriers that you could do this with. So. David, when you declared, I want to be real clear on this. When you declared, uh, when you when you bought the new phone or, or up, upgraded to it, um, is the AT, is AT and T on the eSIM or do they put a physical SIM in your phone? Well, here's let me, let me kind of go through the, the, the scenario. What I did, I probably did a little more archaic, and then the others. You probably could have just gone to the Apple Store and just just t- uh, got your phone, but of course us like having to have the iPhone on the first day it comes out, you want to have it shipped to you because uh, you don't want to wait. So, uh, so I opted to have it shipped to me this time because, you know, all those years of waiting in line at the Apple store is, is always, uh, is always uh, been fun, but uh, you get tired of that after a time. So, so I did get my iPhone shipped to me um, on the, the, the uh, on release day and I received it. So the SIM card was in, in my phone. So what I did was, um, you unfortunately didn't have an opportunity option to to actually not activate it because as soon as you buy the phone, uh, uh, Apple and T-Mobile link it together. So you have to activate the phone with that physical SIM that's already in there. So then what I did was I uh, I, I took the SIM out and I went and uh, contacted T-Mobile uh, and and was actually over their app. I didn't even have to call them and. Uh, uh, it was a great, great experience. What they did was they set me through the process. And really what the process is, is you have to have the ESID. Um, it's a really long uh, number, uh, but you can copy paste it, put it into the chat room to, to, with them. And, uh, and, and then they receive it, put it on your account, and then they give you a QR code that you scan on the phone. And in that case, that QR code has all that information all ready to go. Scan the QR code automatically brings that into the uh, to the phone sets it up and away you go and it was i I couldn't believe how easy it was it took like a i think at the most 20 minutes okay so if i understand what you just said that basically transferred your t-mobile service from the hardware sim over to the e-sim right that is correct okay so now that you can pull your hardware sim out and you still have you your original phone number and it still functions all the same, yeah. Because you, because I was working with T-Mobile's uh, tech support, and uh, they they wouldn't walk me through it, walk through it, and um, it's a very simple process. All the carriers do this, so so don't just because I'm I'm singling out T-Mobile because that's my carrier of choice uh, right now, uh, but I know AT and T uh, and Verizon and Sprint all have the same process where you uh, get a QR code, whether it be on the web or if they they email to you, you scan it with your phone. And, and then that has all the account information built into it. It starts the setup process. Got it. Okay. So now you have a phone that is functioning just exactly the way it did before. You've still got data. You've still got yeah. voice through that particular account, but you have an empty SIM slot that in your case, you could plug the mint SIM into. Right. So then what it, what it does is it says it, it gives you options with line one or line two and you, and you set which default line that you use. 
So it'll show line one right now. I don't have that SIM in this, in this phone. I took it out. Um, but it says empty, but, but it remembers that number because I had put it in there before. So what I can do is, uh, when, when I'm ready, I want to put the SIM back into this phone. Um, it, it automatically shows that that SIM, uh, in fact, if you go into your, the way you see this is when you go into, um, into settings and into cellular. And when you go into cellular, there'll be, it'll show your cellular plans plans as you see it says it's 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 not planned plans <laughs> so you have uh you have options uh here as well as being able to add another cellular plan to uh the list when you go into the settings you're going to see primary which is your number and it says on right now and then it says use as secondary and then right now with mine says no sim but you can put a sim card in there uh being able to uh and be able to uh, uh have both lines going at once and receive receive and place calls on both lines at once um and away you go <laughs> i i just think it's the most amazing thing we finally have something that's simple all of, all of us all of us people loving it having to carry two phones around i think this is going to be a game changer to uh, to eliminate that well i know originally the, the whole eSIM thing and, and the second second sim slot um or the i guess in effect the second sim slot was something that was a little more important i guess overseas but a lot of us here in the States, you're right. We kind of jumped and said, gee, you know, we want this because now we don't have to carry two phones. Right. Um, and not, not not the least of which is you also don't have to buy two phones to carry. So that's that too. Other thing. Um, so, David, this is where now so, – so now we've got the phone equipped. Okay. Everything is is in place. So how do I go about making a call on line one or switching over to line two? How do I toggle it? That's the thing. When you go in, you can't just do it automatically. You do have to go in and actually uh, decide which one is your primary, which is your secondary line. Um, so you can't just, uh, I don't, at least I haven't tried it yet. Um, if, if I recall, well, I had, unfortunately, I should have put the SIM in here so I could, I could look at it. But uh, it, uh, I don't think you can um, actually toggle uh, that quickly. You have to go into the cellular settings and, and choose the line. Um, uh, choose the line that you want to use uh, to make the calls. Um, but I could be wrong because I, like I said, I don't, I don't have it in here to remember that, uh, that, uh, that process, but I'm pretty sure that's, that's the process. Okay. And you know, it's possible that you could develop a shortcut that would let you toggle. Yes. There could be shortcuts, which I have not explored, but uh, that right. is, that is a possibility. Okay, so can I toggle my uh, my preferred line to one or two at any at any time? So let's just say during the week I want to have line one, which is my which is would be a work phone as yep. the primary phone, and then I go off on weekends and I remember that you know Friday night at five o'clock I shift that over and line two becomes my primary line. Absolutely, absolutely. You set set it to whichever whichever line you want as your primary at that time and. I mean, that's what's perfect. So if you're working during the week, you want your work line to be your, your primary line, and that's all you're going to answer, but you'll still be able to receive calls for your personal line. Then you do that. And then on weekends, you'd switch it to, to your personal line's primary, and then your business is secondary. So you always have the option to switch them between the two. So at this point, we're talk, we've talked about outgoing calls, but I think you just referenced. So if I get a, a, a call from my, my work line, and, and then right after that, a call from my home line, both of them ring on my phone. Yes, as far as I know. I have not done a lot of experimenting. You know, caught me off guard on this one. I should have tested this before I came on the show, but I'm almost positive, yes, that will be the case. Yeah. Well, in other words, it's not going to be like my – if I'm set up for line one, line two isn't just going to automatically go to voicemail all the time. I will be able to answer it is, is where I'm – I guess what I'm asking. It, it shouldn't. It shouldn't. Okay. This edition of Mac Voices is sponsored by Linode, your solution when you need a virtual server in the cloud. Need a virtual cloud server like now? Linode has you covered. You can deploy a new server customized to your purposes with the features you want in seconds. Time is money, and if you have that immediate need, Linode is there. And even if you don't need your new server that quickly, Linode is there. And these aren't just any servers. These are SSD-based, 40 gigabit, high-performance processor-powered servers that are suitable for web hosting, distributed applications, hosted servers, and more. Pick from a simple $5 per month nanodes plan, 
or ramp the whole way up to a high-powered dedicated CPU. When you need to upgrade, as your requirements demand, that upgrade is just a click away. To make some deployments even easier, there's a host of one-click installs, with everything from Minecraft to WordPress. Need to locate your server in a particular location for either performance or legal reasons? No problem. Linode has data centers all over the world, including their newest in Canada and one coming soon in Mumbai. Perhaps most important, though, is their pricing. No surprises, no hidden costs. You pay for what you need, and you pay for what you use on an hourly basis. No hidden data transfer fees like some of the larger cloud services. It's your data. Why would you expect to pay to access it? With Linode, you don't. These are just a few of the features that Linode brings to the table. I want you to visit linode.com slash macvoices right now and see what all the fuss is about and take $20 off your first server package. Again, linode.com slash macvoices takes $20 off your first server package. You've been thinking about that virtual server all your own for a long time. Make it happen today with Linode. Thanks to Linode for their support of Mac Voices. All right, so up to this point now, we've talked just about voice. And, of course, there are all kind of studies out there that's saying that iPhones aren't used for voice as much anymore, that they're used primarily for data. So how about the data plans for, for the, the respective SIMs? Um, Same I'm, case. I'm shifting back and forth as I as I go. Yes, same case. Yeah, if you have it as a as the primary, it's going to use the primary as your, um, um, as as the data. I'll give a good example. And when I'm thinking about it now with the Pixel XL, uh, the Pixel Two XL, I had, um, I had Google Fi, and then I had a T-Mobile SIM. Um, whenever I was on Google Fi, it was only Google Fi, and that was that was the data it would use. And when I was on T-Mobile, it was only T-Mobile, and that was the data it used. So that that example kind of gives you the exact same thing in this case, where you have to have one is set as primary, one is set as secondary. If you're using the primary one, then it's going to use that data plan. If you use the secondary and flip it over, then it's going to use that data plan. Okay, so that means that I can get the most out of both plans, oh, yes. uh, both data and, and voice. Um, I just may have to jump through a couple of small hoops to do it. A few. A few. Again, this is all, there is very, very much possibility that there's something different that I haven't looked at. I uh, just want to put that as a disclaimer. But uh, it, uh, it is, uh, I'm almost positive from what I had tested that that is the case. So, David, I got to tell you, other than just the, just the fact that we don't have it right now, and that's, that's as of right now, you know, Apple's bringing out updates all the time. But as of right now, we don't necessarily have a real easy way to shift back between line in one line and line two is the primary. Otherwise, it sounds like it functions pretty much like you would expect it yeah. to function. It does. Yeah, it's, it, it is it is uh, pretty seamless once everything is set to go. As you know, with an iPhone, you put a SIM in, a physical SIM in, and it's going to recognize it as a line. And, uh, and the cool thing is it's, uh, it's two different carriers. So you can have you know, Verizon and AT&T, or you can have T-Mobile and AT&T, whatever you choose. So you can have two separate carriers uh, in one phone. Um, and that's, that's, yeah, that's great. Pretty crazy. Right now, you know, I think at this point we should caution folks that you, we're talking about you purchasing two separate plans from two separate carriers. They're not going to care what, whether you're using an eSIM or the hardware SIM or whatever, you're going to be restricted to all of their usual, um, what's the word, shall I say, um, requirements of, right. you know, the contracts and usage and all that. So just be aware of that fact. But on the other hand, this, this does sound like something that's kind of exciting that yeah. it, it'll, it will relieve me from having, having to carry two phones. Now, the, the beauty of, of having another second carrier, like in the case of Mint, Mint's an MVNO uh, uh, service, so it's, it, it, it piggybacks onto T-Mobile. You can get you know, Boost Mobile, you can get uh, Cricket, you can get any of these other carriers that, that, that tap onto the other carriers, like Cricket in that case is AT&T, um, and I believe Boost Mobile is Sprint, if I remember correctly. Um, so you could have those secondary carriers as, as a backup, as, 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 as another, as another business line you know, the, the it's it's endless and the, the great thing about these mvno services you can turn them on and off whenever you want versus you committing to uh being with uh you know the case t-mobile or at&t spin that back to what the reason why i buy my iphones through apple 
I could walk away from eight, from from T-Mobile at any time. So um, if I choose, you know, I'm 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 kind of tired T-Mobile. I want to move over to Verizon. Let's say um, I can do it without any penalty because I don't have an obligation or a contract with them because I purchased the phone through the Apple upgrade program. If you purchase the phone from the carrier, that's a whole nother story. Then yes, you're going to be locked to them because they're going to lock it down to, to only for that carrier. Right. Good, good, very good points. Very good points. And and I have to say that I've, I had a situation where I was standing nose to nose with someone. We were trying to access some data in, in that particular situation. I had AT&T, they had Verizon, they had great coverage. I had none uh, for data. And so, you know, it's one of those things where you really do realize that there still are differences in, in all of these services, and you really have to pay attention to which service you're buying. And that's another area that, aside from the fact that you'd be having to purchase two plans, now you can have two different carriers, and therefore you have twice the chance that you're going to have the coverage you need. And that, that's, a, that's, a, that's a great example. Um, I was traveling in southwest uh, Michigan last uh, weekend as we record this, and um, T-Mobile's coverage isn't great out there. Uh, but uh, apparently Verizon is. So, you know, I could have, you know, uh, I guess a good example would be Xfinity Mobile. They're, they're an MVNO carrier. You could, you could get service from them, start up for, you know, for a period of time. If you feel you're going to be traveling in those areas that have weak, weak signals. So if you like T-Mobile, in the case, that's what I do. You know, I, I know we never had that uh, opportunities before. You always had, you either have your carrier or you don't. You got to move. Um, so this is this is where it's going to give you a lot of opportunity to be able to have a backup if if you happen to see that you're traveling much. I mean, if there if you're someone who doesn't need to have second line like this, yeah, this this is it's not anything for you. So yeah, I'm not quite sure if this is a this is a geeky episode of Mac Voices or a a business oriented <laughs> episode or a little bit of both. A little bit um, both, yeah. Yeah, because it's it's definitely something that the business person I think uh, is going to have some interest in if they have a, a, a business phone of any kind, but there's the geek in me that says, okay, yeah, I, cause some, some of the, there are some carriers out there that I've seen, at least in the past that give some pretty nice data packages so that while I might not necessarily be enamored with their, um, with their voice service, gee, it'd be nice to pick up that much cheap data. So yeah, you know that that may be another reason for you to look at, at this particular solution. Um, and then one other point I forgot. I want to remember before I don't forget. Um, uh, when I did uh, set up my phone for the first time from the SIM card and transferred it to the eSIM, I had to set the phone up, and I didn't want to set it up all the way and restore my data and all that stuff. So I just set it up as a new phone, um, and then turned around and um, when I activated from uh, from SIM to eSIM. Um, you have to do a full reset. And if it has the one thing I worried about is, okay, if I'm having eSIM, eSIM is a, is, is, is a stored, uh, is, 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 is a stored service that's in there. Is it going to reset it that completely? And I have to go back and contact T-Mobile all over again because I reset it. Well, Apple in their infinite wisdom put in a, a great feature reset all settings, but leave the cellular uh, portion of it alone. And then I, in fact, I posted this in your, in, in the Mac Voices uh, Facebook group uh, uh, a while ago with a screenshot of, of the, that exact message. And uh, I was thoroughly impressed because I was a little concerned about it. I tried it and then I wanted to see, is it going to do it? And I was like, oh, I don't want to deal with this again. It didn't. So it does save those settings always whenever you have to do a, you get to that extreme when you have to do a full reset of your device. Okay. So you're talking about the cellular settings that you have yes. the option to, to hold those. All right, so let's talk about this this idea that it's like setting up a new phone. Um, so, is that are you talking about you know like the full iCloud backup and restore, or a backup and yes. restore say from iTunes? Is yeah, that any, the kind of restore we're talking about? Yeah, that's what I didn't do. I was an extreme case. This probably wouldn't be this a little more geekier than what most people would probably would do. I would, you would probably go into the store and say, "Hey, I want to set this up with eSIM." You, you know, you're walking into the store, whether you be, you know, you go to the Apple store and just go to the store and have them do it because you know, it'll save you a lot of time and a lot of steps if you want, want to want to go on eSIM right away. And then this way, you're fine. But the only thing is, I just I mentioned that I know we were off the topic we we're talking about is uh, the, the fact of the matter is that it. it the settings stay, they will not get reset. So that that's one of the biggest concerns I had. 
especially one of the experience I had when I was uh, traveling in Italy. And I, I was on eSIM, kind of the beta version, you want to, let's say, and I lost my settings and they couldn't restore it because mm. I was in another country. So, Okay. So, yeah, thank you. I'm glad you mentioned that because that's yeah. – it's not quite a gotcha, but it is something that you want to pay attention mm. to and make sure that your phone is, at the very least, backed up to iCloud. Right. Hmm. Okay. All right. You may have uh, you, you may have guided me down a path here that I'm going to take a shot at this, um, oh. and and you know you but also you pointed out to the uh, to the overseas thing, and that is as you said at the top, this is another great use for this, another yeah. reason that you would like to go to eSIM, and you know then have the uh, the slot open. Absolutely, absolutely. David, I know you don't have all the answers, but something occurs to me here that if we're talking about an eSIM, an eSIM is not forever. So if I decided that at some point I was going to terminate my AT&T contract mm -hmm. and was going to go over to Verizon and then would want to use, say, Verizon on the eSIM and Mint in the hardware SIM, I can still do that. It's just a matter of taking the phone to Verizon and having them reprogram it. 100%. That's all you have to do is give them the eSID. Um, that, that's that really long number. It's not, the, the number is a little different than the actually real long number that I put on the physical SIMs. Um, and that, that ID identifies your phone. That's your eSIM. So you, that eSIM always belongs to you. So they, yeah, they can't, it's not like, yeah, that we're, that's, that's the reason why you would answer that, ask that question because we're so used to anytime we have a problem, they always have to give you a new SIM. It's always that that's the case. In, in this case, no, um, it, it, it should be able to, uh, be reactivated without a problem as, as long as the phone is unlocked no problem you make it sound so easy well i mean it it, it was the process was somewhat easy for me but uh buyer beware <laughs> as it was i really will say because you don't uh, you don't know what what could happen there could be any weird things can happen but in most cases these carriers have been equipped now at this point to, to support 100 percent fully support eSIM. so and, and it would make sense, I think, not only for them to support it, but also to to make the experience, the transition over, as simple as possible, yeah. so that you you want to stay with them. You know, they're not trying to; they shouldn't be trying to put up a barrier to you wanting to use this capability, whether it's a second line or whether it's you know traveling overseas or whatever your reason is for wanting that that second line. Yeah, give. Let's put ours on line one as the eSIM, and then you know that that way, it's not going to it's it's going to be just a little bit more of a barrier to say let's to move from let's say Verizon over to T-Mobile, um, right. because I'm going to have to take it in and get it done most likely. But why why wouldn't you why wouldn't you do that? So hopefully yeah. that's the way they see it. I mean, and that's the way a lot of anytime I've gone into the carrier, the carrier location in the case is T-Mobile, um, they're all excited. They want they want to use eSIM. It's much easier for them too because they don't have to mess around with getting these physical SIM cards. And plus, they charge you for those physical SIM cards too. I mean, uh, anytime you anytime you change, so um, you don't have to pay for that because it's part of your phone. I mean, I. I you know, granted, probably the the carriers probably didn't like that too much because a little bit of a revenue uh, stream there. But for as much as they make on the service, I don't think they could care much about that. Yeah, and those little eSIMs are, I mean, they're they're smaller than a, a lot smaller than a thumbnail. They're so easy to lose too. That too. So, the last question that I thought of as we're talking: um, Have you noticed any impact? Uh, and I can't imagine why there really would be much of an impact. But have you noticed any impact on battery life? None at all. No. Nope. And of course, I have the 10, as we had at our bear pass show of uh, which 12 phones we've got, I have the 11 Pro Max, and the battery life is already phenomenal as it is. And uh, no, as I have been on eSIM since, e since day one, and uh, no noticeable problems with battery life at all. And no noticeable changes when you, when you put the Mint SIM in as, the, as a second line and had it active? Nope. Nope. It's, it just works just like it's supposed to. Okay. It's in the iPhone. Yeah. Yeah, it's an iPhone. It's it should work as it's supposed to. Yeah. That's that's what we'd like to believe. Cool. Yeah. David, thank you for sharing. Um, you know, I had uh, again, so many of those questions seem like they should be obvious, but we all know from the tech world that uh things aren't off, often are not obvious. 
and also that you know sometimes the companies you know that are out there don't they do things that are not necessarily customer friendly because they want to keep you locked in so i'm glad to hear that this is something that maybe we can accomplish without having to jump those those hurdles yeah should should be an easy process i can't imagine you running into much of any problems if i do i'll have them call you all right <laughs> Um, I mentioned in touch with iOS. Uh, run through where folks can hear everything you do and contact you if they have questions yeah. about the eSIM or anything else. Yeah, uh, I'm, my podcast is in touch with iOS at in touch with iOS.com. Been uh, doing that for, oh gosh, we've got about 70 plus episodes now. I'm going to give that a listen and uh, uh, enjoy that. And uh, the, lots of uh, great uh, topics of discussion relating to anything related to iOS and uh, iPhone, iPad. Uh, the, the whole shebang and uh and uh yeah if you can reach me i'm i'm, I'm usually on twitter a lot with uh, uh with uh, you can contact me there as well and uh, i'm at uh, dave g65 terrific david thanks for the information we'll talk to you again soon yes we will thanks for having me folks i'm chuck joiner this is mac voices this is one of those capabilities that you may or may not have known about for your phone but if you have the need or you just want to mess around with it um, or maybe you're thinking about transitioning carriers uh, or auditioning carriers. This might be a good way to do it and still keep your current carrier as, as it is. Until the next time, and as always, thanks for watching. Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com Bandwidth provided by CashFly at CashFly.com.